Okay, well, there's the old 7-ton, and today we're going to be talking about a 7-ton, but if you miss the days of the old 5-tons where you could have a hard top or a soft top or you could take the top off completely, um, or if you bought a 7-ton but you really, really wanted a convertible so you could drive around and have the wind in your hair, then you're in luck. Today I'm going to show you how to reduce the cab on a 7-ton truck so it's like a convertible. Uh, let's get started, but first we'll go over some tools. Here we are in an informal setting to go over the tools. Oh, and the instructions too, by the way. Um, I'm looking at Technical Manual 10629-10C. Um, it's the operator's manual for the 7-ton truck, and it talks about the process of reducing the truck height. Now, we're not going to go through all the instructions for reducing the height. We don't really want to do that. We just want to reduce the cab. And so, the first thing it talks about is a bunch of tools that you need, and it, it lists three tools, an adjustable wrench, of pliers, and an Allen wrench. Um, we never use the adjustable wrench and the pliers, so we don't need those. Um, the this one is, a, is an eight millimeter Allen, and that's the one that we used, and it worked great. It also tells you you need a long piece of four by four piece of wood, and then the first thing it tells you is you need to cut the wood. So you could save yourself a lot of time and trouble on the day you're going to do this and cut the wood in advance. So you need two pieces, and this is just a four by four, an old four by four laying around, and they say to cut it two and a half inches. It turns out the two and a half inches long isn't really important. It just has to fit um, between the vents on the dash. So those little round black vents that are sitting on the dash, as long as it fits between those, so two and a half inches, three and a half inches, three inches, probably even up to four or five inches, all that's fine. Um, these aren't so important. It just holds the um, windshield up off the dash. I guess to keep it from breaking or from um, scraping up the dash. So you need those. Now we found a lot of other tools really helpful and uh, one of those is a block of wood, just a piece of 2x4 and I'll show you uh, in the videos when we use that. Um, we also used a nut driver because it's a 5 16 because when you're loosening the air filter or the, sorry, the air intake, um, it's useful to have that. Maybe that's what you were supposed to use the adjustable wrench for, but boy, that would take forever. This, this goes a lot faster. Um, we also have a bunch of miscellaneous tools here, long screwdrivers, pry bar, um, things like that, because separating the cab from the truck body itself was, or the roof from the cab, was a little bit difficult. Maybe in my truck they haven't done it for a few years and so everything was kind of stuck all together. And then the last thing we used was just a piece of wood. This one has a bunch of junk on it, but um, to get some leverage and to hold things up, you know, while the cab is just sitting there, we use this to kind of prop it up. So those are the tools that we used. Um, the next few pages in the manual talk about talks about letting air out of the tires and hooking up the limp home struts and all that kind of stuff. But again, we're not trying to reduce the overall height. We're just trying to reduce the cab to make it into a convertible so we can drive around with the wind in our hair. Okay, for the first of the two mysteries, we're behind the cab on the little platform. And there's a couple little... Um, I don't know, hooks or something you'd call it. I always kind of wondered what these were for. They're kind of too small to be a coat hanger or something. And there's two of them. One there and then behind the exhaust stack and air intake, there's another one. So there's two of those things and I never knew what they were for. And the other mystery is inside the cab. Okay, so we're inside the cab looking for the second mystery, and it's actually right above us up on the roof. So what are these straps for? I thought, well, maybe it's for holding some kind of tool, a shovel. There's two of them. There's one there, and then there's one over on the other side, too. Um, right about there. 
So, what are those for? Oh, and by the way, as long as I'm in the cab, one of the steps in reducing the cab is to have you reduce these. So this is the seat belt arm, and it can go up and down. And normally it would be in an upper position to make it more comfortable to have the seat belt. But they say to drop these all the way down, and there's uh, three of them. There's one on the driver's side there, one between the driver and the passenger seat, and then there's one way over there on the other side. So one step is to drop all those down. The other step they wanted is to remove this um, back on the passenger seat and to drop the driver's seat all the way down so it's in its lowest position. Um, we did all of those things, but later we found out, oh, we didn't really need to do those. Okay, so then we run back onto the platform, and the next step, after we've lowered the seats and the uh, seat belt columns, is to come back here to the air filter, and this is the, or sorry, the air intake. And what we want to do here is take off this cap. Um, the way we do that is we come down to this clamp, if my phone will focus. And again, we used a nut driver. It's not exactly clear what in the manual you're supposed to be using, but yeah, we used a nut driver and just take that off. Now, in the instructions, it actually says to take off this entire stack here. Um, but again, I think that's to reduce the overall height of the truck. All we did was take off this cap part. And that's all you need to do to reduce the cap. And by the way, while I had the air filter cap off, I took some photos looking down the tube. Um, on this photo, I zoomed in to see what it was down there. And the next step is to pull off the windshield wipers. We had quite a bit of trouble with this one, so we'll show you how to do it. Oh, and I have converted um, my truck to the civilian uh, wipers, because I didn't like trying to find the military ones. These you can get at any uh, auto parts store. So, in the instructions, it said to pull off the hose up on the arm, but we couldn't figure that out. So we're just pulling it off right here where Jenny's pulling it off on the truck. And we found that to be a lot easier, and then it just comes with the whole wiper arm assembly. Also, we found it very difficult to push that little tab up. Yeah, Jenny's got her screwdriver in there, and I'm using a block of wood, which is helping a lot. Boy, that helps a lot. So, there, Jenny's pushed up on that tab. That releases the wiper from the shaft. And if we're lucky, we'll just be able to push this off. We had a lot of trouble before. And it looks like this one's going to give us some trouble too. So uh, just follow this procedure and keep working it until you finally get it off. Okay, we figured out one problem that, that we were having. Jenny still got her screwdriver there lifting the tab, even though at this point we don't need to. And what I was doing is I was pushing on this silver part which is the shaft itself, and we don't want to do that. So I had to back off a little bit and push on just the... Oh, <laughs> there goes our piece of wood again. Um, push on just the arm itself and not, not on this shaft part. So that's something to remember when you're doing it. Hi. Okay, Jenny's still helping. One thing we did is we took out the gunner hatch. We just thought maybe it would make it lighter and stuff. So the next step is to get this back wall to fold in. And I showed you a couple of the things before, but um, here's what you need to turn. So it's this <laughs> um, Allen, not the other ones. And there's four of them. There's that one up in the corner behind the driver. Then there's one just beside the driver and a seat belt. Then there's one over there, and Jenny's going to turn it. You turn it counterclockwise. It's kind of a pain to get to them. And then there's one more um, over here on the passenger side. And they all have that same big uh, Allen wrench. So once you've loosened those, then 
the back wall supposedly is loose. Now we had a ton of problems trying to get it to move. So what we did is we actually took some big screwdrivers and pry bars and stuff and we put it in here. It's not obvious where they split, but they actually split right here. And so if you can get a pry bar in there and pry it up, then the whole back window will separate. And you need to push the back window up first and then fold it in. Okay, so we're still trying to get the back wall moved. So the whole idea is this back wall is going to fold up here and then you attach it with these straps I showed you earlier. But man, we tried and tried and tried and we couldn't get the, the back wall. You have to lift it up a little bit and then it will swing in and tuck up here. So we stuck some screwdrivers and pry bars and everything in there. And now we've figured out that really the whole cab is lifting. And I think you can see that. I'll use this pry bar to lift it up a little bit. And you can see right here, there's a crack. And um, so I'm basically lifting the whole cab right now. And maybe this is why you need two people to do this. So. It also was kind of stuck, I guess from years, the gasket was really stuck on there. So I would suggest using a pry bar first, lifting the back up a little bit, freeing everything up, and then maybe putting away the pry bars and just using your hands to lift it, pull this back wall up and against the ceiling. That's what we're gonna do now. Okay, we ran into a, a lucky thing that we didn't really count on. So I'm gonna tell you a little tip. So what we were doing is I was lifting it like before. You don't need to lift it up very far, just far enough to clear these um, blocks. And so that's what we did. And you can see now the back window is free. So you don't really need two people to lift up the whole cab. So now this just comes up and tucks to the ceiling like it's supposed to. Use the straps like I showed you before. Put onto those keepers and you're done. That's it. So in reviewing some of the footage that we shot, the audio is missing. So I'm just going to do a voiceover for the next couple of clips here uh, to make things more understandable. Okay, so the next thing is I got a couple helpers and we're going to lift the roof and then push it forward. So the whole thing the roof and this is the windshield and we're going to push it up and forward and then lay it on the hood two latches you've got to release up here we've already cut the straps they're stainless steel latches they're pretty nice and then yeah the next step is we just lift and push it forward So the next step is to lift. You can see the mirrors are folding forward by themselves. We did not do anything to prepare them, uh, so the mirrors are just doing that automatically. Oh, I forgot to mention you need two blocks, and those have to go on the dash. And yes, it is sitting on the block, so now we are done with the roof and the windshield. No, we've done that part. At this point, the roof and the windshield are sitting down on the hood, and it's resting on those two 4x4 four four blocks, uh, which just keeps it up off the dash. Oh, we also have a blanket on the hood, but it turns out we didn't need that. And so a lot of the cab is gone at this point. The only parts are left are the door frame and the windows. So you roll down the window glass. Roll down the window, then there's two clips here and they have a little safety thing. Just tip that out after you've released the clips. Down. And I can see that my truck is broken. And it's broken, my truck. So I'll have to fix that later. Then the next part is to remove the, the door frame. And it's. And unfortunately, it, it does just. It's pretty easy off. to do, but it's. With my truck, they forgot to cut. Um, 
down to the hinge point. So I'm going to have to get a knife and cut that. And actually this whole thing just lifts off and on the ground. This is the last part. We've just got this uh, frame around the door. And I have already cut the gasket. So I can easily separate this. This part's a little bit dangerous. You have to tip it out towards the outside of the truck quite a ways. So I'm standing on the bottom of the door um, so that I don't lose my balance and fall out of the truck. Um, it's pretty easy to get it off at that point, and then you can either store it in the back of the truck or you can store it on the platform behind the cab. Um, we're just going to throw it on the ground over there. And that's basically it then. Now you've got a convertible seven-ton truck. Okay, here's what it looks like with everything taken off. Um, my wife and I, we're going through and cleaning all the weather stripping, all the gaskets and everything. They're really dirty. And I'm replacing the one that's on the, between the windshield and the roof. You can kind of see it laying there. Um, because that one was leaking and water was getting into the cab. That's one of the reasons we decided to do all of this. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. And while we're flying around this truck, let me mention a couple things. Number one, the operator's manual. It is available on Steel Soldiers. Um, also, this isn't really talking about reassembly, but one thing I should point out is when you go to put the hood, no, you should kneel on the hood to put the cab roof and the windshield back in place. You really can't do it from standing inside the cab. Um, we put a blanket on the hood when we were lowering the the roof and the windshield, but that wasn't really necessary. It does take two people to lower the roof and windshield onto the hood. I used three, but I think two people could do it. 30 minutes is what the manual says. I think you'd have to practice a lot to get it done in that amount of time because that includes letting the air out of the tires and putting in the limp home struts and a lot of stuff like that. Um, finally, you shouldn't really drive with the cab reduced. If you do, it should be at very low speeds. So thank you for watching and that's it.